At the Galactic Cultural Exchange Summit aboard the starship Harmony, hundreds of species mingled, their voices creating a cacophony of sounds that resonated through the Grand Hall. The air was filled with a mix of anticipation and curiosity as representatives from different worlds interacted, some for the first time. Jack, a seasoned delegate from Earth, scanned the room with practiced ease. He was here to foster goodwill and perhaps learn something novel to bring back home. His eyes settled on a figure standing awkwardly at the edge of the room. She was Lyra, a delegate from Thallus, her vibrant blue skin and luminescent eyes marking her distinct from the crowd. Jack, intrigued by her hesitant demeanor, decided to approach her. Hello, Jack started, extending his hand in a typical human greeting. I'm Jack from Earth, and you are. Lyra looked at his hand, then at his face, her expression unreadable. I am Lyra of Thallus. We do not touch hands. We touch minds, she pointed gracefully to her temple. Jack smiled, retracting his hand. I see. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Lyra. Mind if I join you? She nodded, and they both watched the bustling room. It's overwhelming, she admitted, her voice a melodic whisper. So many beings, each with their own worlds, their own stories. Jack nodded. It's a lot to take in, but each summit is a chance to learn something new. What brought you here, Lyra? Lyra's gaze was fixed on a group of Arcturians demonstrating their telekinetic skills. I am here to observe and report. My people are cautious. We don't venture out much beyond our borders. Intrigued by her candidness, Jack asked, Is this your first time interacting with humans? Yes, she replied, turning to face him fully. Telosians have heard many stories about humans. Most are conflicting. That sounds about right, Jack chuckled. We humans are a complicated bunch. What sort of stories? Lyra hesitated choosing her words carefully. Stories of both chaos and kindness. It makes one curious but also cautious. Jack's interest deepened. Well, I hope during this summit, I can show you the kinder side of humanity. Their conversation was suddenly interrupted by an announcement over the PA system, inviting delegates to join in the opening ceremony activities. Jack saw an opportunity. Would you like to join the activities with me, Lyra? It might give you a better insight into how these events work and you can meet some of my colleagues. Lyra considered this, then nodded slightly. Yes, I would appreciate that, Jack. Thank you. As they moved through different interactive stations from holographic history displays to a live cooking demonstration of various galactic cuisines, Jack introduced Lyra to other human delegates. We were all keen to show their friendly intentions and share aspects of human culture with her. Lyra observed everything with an air of quiet fascination asking questions and slowly opening up more about her own world. Jack was impressed by her sharp intellect and the subtle humor she occasionally let slip. The more they talked, the more Jack realized that this summit might just be the beginning of a fascinating relationship, not just between a human and a Thelosian, but between their two worlds. As the ceremony concluded with a stunning display of unity, a dance performed by representatives of different species, Jack and Lyra stood side by side, watching in awe. It's beautiful, isn't it? Jack said, watching the performers. Yes, very, Lyra replied. Perhaps, Jack, there is more to humans than the stories tell. Jack smiled. And maybe there's more to Thalassians than you might think, too. Let's find out together, shall we? Lyra smiled back, a gesture that Jack took as a promising start to what could be a groundbreaking new alliance. The next morning, as the starship Harmony glided through the cosmos, Jack and Lyra along with a group of delegates from various species, were scheduled for a guided tour around the human spaceship section. Among the group was Tom, a jovial engineer eager to share his passion for human spacecraft design. Welcome, everyone. Tom greeted them as they congregated near the entrance of the engineering bay. Today we're going to see some of the technology that keeps us moving through the stars. And I promise, it's not just nuts and bolts, there's some pretty cool stuff here. Lyra looked intrigued, her eyes scanning the sleek corridors lined with panels and glowing lights. This is very different from Talosian ships, she commented to Jack. How so? Jack asked, genuinely curious about her perspective. Our technology integrates more with natural elements. It's less metallic, Lyra explained, her fingers lightly touching the cold, smooth surface of a wall panel. Tom overheard her and chimed in. That sounds fascinating, Lyra. Here, we rely on non alloys and composites for strength and efficiency. But let's start with the propulsion system. Follow me. As the group moved through the corridors, Tom led them to a large viewing window overlooking the main engine room. 
What you're looking at is the heart of the ship Orion propulsion system. It's powered by a combination of solar energy and quantum batteries, which gives us a pretty good kick. Quantum batteries? Lyra asked, her interest peaked. Yes, Tom replied, excited by her interest. They store energy at a quantum level, which means we can hold a lot more power in a smaller space. It's perfect for long journeys. Lyra nodded thoughtfully. The Lusian ships harness energy from spatial currents. It's more about flow than storage. That's a brilliant approach, Jack said, impressed. Seems like both methods have their unique benefits. Absolutely, Tom agreed. It's about what works best for the environment you're traveling in. The tour continued with demonstrations of emergency systems, life support, and artificial gravity areas. Lyra and Jack occasionally exchanged thoughts, slowly bridging the gap between human and Thelosian technological philosophies. After the technical tour, the group moved to the recreational area where humans relaxed and socialized during long voyages. And here's where we try to keep sane, Tom joked as they entered a room filled with various games and a mini-theater. Lyra observed a group of humans engaged in a virtual reality game. What are they doing? She asked. They're playing a simulation game. It helps with stress and is also quite fun. Would you like to try? Tom offered. Tryingford. Lyra looked hesitant, but Jack encouraged her. Go on, it might be fun. With a slight nod, Lyra agreed and soon found herself wearing a VR headset, guided by Tom and cheered on by Jack. She quickly grasped the concept her movements becoming fluid as she navigated the virtual landscape. You're a natural, Jack laughed as Lyra successfully completed the level. Lyra removed the headset, a smile playing on her lips. That was unexpectedly enjoyable. I'm glad you liked it, Jack said. Sometimes it's the simple things that can bridge worlds. As the tour concluded and the group dispersed, Lyra turned to Jack. Thank you for today. I appreciate the insights and the company. Jack smiled. The pleasure was all mine, Lyra. There's a lot we can learn from each other. Walking back to the conference area, Lyra and Jack discussed the possibilities of integrating their technologies, perhaps even co-developing a hybrid system that could benefit both their species. Imagine the potential, Jack mused. Yes, a fusion of flow and storage, Lyra agreed, her mind already racing with ideas. Their shared excitement was palpable a sign of not only a burgeoning friendship but also the potential for a groundbreaking collaboration that could one day transcend their initial apprehensions and lead to something truly monumental. On the third day of the summit, the morning began with an intercultural workshop designed to enhance understanding among different species. Jack and Lyra, along with a few other human delegates and representatives from various planets, were gathered in a conference room, equipped with translation devices to facilitate communication. The session was led by Dr. Henry Lin, a cultural anthropologist and a human delegate known for his expertise in Sino relations. His goal was to navigate through cultural differences and foster a spirit of cooperation. Good morning, everyone, Dr. Lin began, smiling warmly at the group. Today we'll explore some common gestures and social norms across cultures. Understanding these can help us avoid misunderstandings and build stronger relationships. Lyra listened intently, sitting next to Jack who seemed equally curious about the day's topic. Dr. Lin continued, For instance, in many human cultures, eye contact is considered polite and shows interest. However, this isn't universal. Can anyone share how it's viewed in their culture? A Maranthian delegate spoke up. In Maranth, sustained eye contact is a challenge to authority. It's considered disrespectful. Lyra added, Thalassians use eye contact sparingly. It is reserved for family or close friends. Too much eye contact in other situations can be intrusive. Jack nodded, understanding the delicate balance required in such interactions. Thanks for sharing that, Lyra. It's quite different on Earth. What about gestures of greeting? I know humans often shake hands. Dr. Lin pointed to a screen displaying various greeting methods. Yes, Jack. Other species might use bows, waves, or even vocal harmonics. Let's try a few and see how they feel. The group stood up and Dr. Lin demonstrated a simple bow, which was common among the Ardenians. Jack and Lyra attempted the bow, sharing a laugh as they tried to get the angle right. Now let's talk about misunderstandings, Dr. Lin suggested. Has anyone experienced a cultural faux pas they'd like to share? It's okay, this is how we learn. Jack decided to share a light-hearted mistake from his past. Once I tried to give a thumbs up to a Galdarian trader to show approval. Turned out, in their culture, 
It's an offensive gesture. Thankfully, they understood it was a mistake once we talked it out. The group chuckled, and Lyra looked thoughtful. I think I might have already made a few mistakes, she confessed. When Jack first greeted me, he offered his hand, which I didn't take. It wasn't personal, Jack. Jack smiled reassuringly. I figured as much, Lyra. It's all part of the learning process. Dr. Lynn nodded, pleased with the interaction. Exactly, Jack. Now, let's try an exercise. Pair up with someone from a different culture and discuss a typical day in your life. Focus on understanding, not just the activities, but the cultural context behind them. Jack and Lyra paired up, eager to delve deeper into each other's worlds. Lyra described a typical day on Thallus, mentioning how they harmonize their activities with the natural cycles of their planet. In contrast, Jack explained, humans tend to structure their days around work schedules and personal commitments. But there's also a growing trend towards balancing life, much like Thalassians. Their conversation revealed not just differences but surprising similarities in values such as the importance of community and family. As the workshop wrapped up, Dr. Lin encouraged them to keep the dialogue open. Remember, every interaction is an opportunity to learn. You're not just delegates at a summit, you're pioneers of par diplomacy. Lyra and Jack left the room feeling enlightened and amused by the day's exchanges. They had not only learned about other cultures but had also deepened their understanding of each other. Today was enlightening, Jack said as they walked toward the summit hall. It was, Lyra agreed, her smile reflecting a newfound appreciation for the complexities and the potential of interspecies interactions. And thank you, Jack, for helping me navigate through these human customs. Anytime, Lyra. I'm looking forward to learning more about Thalos, Jack replied, realizing that every moment spent with Lyra opened a new chapter of understanding in this vast, diverse universe. As the days of the summit progressed, Jack found himself increasingly drawn to Lyra's intelligence and her unique perspective on the universe. One afternoon, he invited her to join him and a few other delegates for a simulated zero-gravity experience of favorite activity among human delegates eager to showcase their surface faring capabilities. Hey, Lyra. You up for floating around a bit? It's a human-style fun session, Jack asked, hoping she'd join the lighter, more casual side of the summit. Lyra looked intrigued but hesitant. Floating? In zero gravity? Yes, it's quite safe and fun. Plus, it's a great way to relax and chat outside of formal meetings and workshops. Jack explained, seeing her curiosity peak. All right, I'll join. It might help me understand why humans enjoy altering their physical state so much, Lyra said with a hint of a smile. When they arrived at the zero-gravity simulation chamber, several other human delegates, including Mike, an experienced astronaut, were already suiting up. Mike greeted Lyra warmly, introducing himself and helping her get acquainted with the equipment. Welcome, Lyra. First time in zero-G, Mike asked as he checked the fit of her safety harness. Yes, it is my first time, Lyra responded, slightly apprehensive but comforted by the friendly assistance. Don't worry, you'll be fine. It's like swimming but without the resistance. Just let go and enjoy, Mike reassured her, offering a thumbs up which Jack quickly intercepted with a gentle shake of his head, remembering the earlier cultural lesson. Mike laughed off his mistake. Right, no thumbs up. Got it. As they entered the chamber, the gravity slowly dissipated allowing everyone to float freely. Lyra's initial tension melted away as she experienced weightlessness, her laughter mingling with the others. This is extraordinary, Lyra exclaimed, spinning slightly, her arms outstretched. Jack floated over to her, stabilizing himself with a handrail. It's a favorite pastime for many of us on long missions. It helps relieve the stress of gravity-bound life. Lyra nodded, now moving more confidently. I can see the appeal. On Thalos, we have meditation chambers that simulate different natural environments like being underwater or in the heart of a windstorm. It's about sensory experiences. This feels somewhat similar. Human technology focuses a lot on recreating and manipulating physical environments. It's about control, but also about understanding and respecting the forces we deal with, Jack explained, noticing her growing comfort and enthusiasm. As they continued to float, Mike joined them performing a somersault. It's not just fun. We train in environments like this for our missions. It's essential for our work in space. The conversation drifted from leisure to the practical applications of human space technology. And Lyra shared more about Telosian approaches to space travel, 
which were more about harmony with cosmic currents than conquering space. It seems both our cultures have much to learn from each other, Jack mused, floating nearby. Indeed, Lyra agreed, her tone thoughtful. Perhaps there's room for a collaborative project in the future. Your technology and our understanding of cosmic flows could complement each other well. Jack smiled, pleased with the direction of their discussion. I'd like that. Exploring space is one of humanity's greatest ambitions. Collaborating could help us do it in ways we haven't yet imagined. As their time in the chamber came to an end, they returned to the solid ground of the ship, both feeling a sense of newfound connection not just between each other, but also between the potential future collaborations of their respective worlds. Today was enlightening, Lyra said as they exited the chamber. Thank you, Jack, for sharing this with me. Anytime, Lyra. I'm just as grateful for the chance to see things from your perspective, Jack replied, realizing that each shared moment was a step toward something bigger than the summit itself. The summit schedule left the evenings relatively free for informal interactions, and Jack planned to make the most of this opportunity. He invited Lyra to join him and a small group of delegates for an observation deck party, where they could witness the spectacular nebula views that the Harmony was currently passing. Tonight there's going to be a viewing of the Helix Nebula. It's supposed to be quite a sight from the deck. Would you like to come? Jack asked Lyra earlier that day. Alira, always curious about the cosmos, agreed. I would love to see it, Jack. I've studied various nebulae, but viewing one from a human ship sounds like a unique experience. As the evening arrived, Jack, Lyra, and the others gathered on the observation deck. The lights were dimmed to enhance the visibility of the cosmic spectacle outside the large panoramic windows. The nebula was a swirl of colors, glowing gases painting a vivid tapestry against the backdrop of deep space. It's beautiful. Lyra whispered, her eyes wide with wonder. It really is, Jack agreed, standing close by her side. It's moments like these that remind us how vast and mysterious the universe is. Their conversation drifted to the philosophies of their respective cultures regarding the cosmos. Lyra shared how Thelosians viewed the universe as a living entity, each star and planet a part of a larger cosmic organism. That's a beautiful way to see things, Jack commented. Humans have often seen space as a frontier to be explored and understood, but there's a growing appreciation for the interconnectedness of everything. As the evening progressed, the others gradually drifted away, leaving Jack and Lyra alone by the window, the nebula casting ethereal lights over their faces. Jack took a deep breath, turning to face Lyra more directly. Lyra, I've really enjoyed our talks these past few days. I feel like I've learned so much from you. Lyra turned to him her expression softening, and I from you, Jack. I never expected to connect with a human in such a way. There was a pause, a silent acknowledgement of the connection they both felt. Jack reached out, tentatively taking her hand. I'm glad we met, Lyra. Lyra's hand trembled slightly, but she didn't pull away. Instead, she stepped closer. So am I, she said softly. Encouraged, Jack leaned in, and they shared their first kiss, gentle and tentative under the light of the nebula. Kiss deepened, driven by the weeks of growing affection and understanding between them. When they finally pulled apart, they were both breathless. Lyra laughed lightly, a sound of joy and surprise. I said I would never date a human, she murmured, her eyes shining with emotions. Jack smiled, his heart racing. I'm glad you made an exception. They spent the rest of the evening talking about everything and nothing, their chairs pulled close together. They discussed potential futures, possible collaborations between their peoples, and the uncertainty of interspecies relationships. As the night drew to a close, Jack and Lyra walked back to their quarters, their hands entwined. What happens when the summit ends? Lyra asked quietly. So I'll figure it out, Jack said confidently. There's too much between us to just let it go. Lyra nodded, squeezing his hand. Yes, we will figure it out, together. That night, under the stars and the light of the Helix Nebula, they found something rare and precious in understanding that transcended species a bond forged not just by curiosity, but by genuine affection and mutual respect. The following morning, Jack and Lyra met for breakfast in the ship's communal dining area, a place buzzing with delegates chatting over steaming cups of coffee and an array of interstellar breakfast foods. Both were slightly nervous but excited after the emotional depth of the previous evening. Good morning, Lyra, Jack greeted her, his voice carrying a hint of the joy from last night. Good morning, Jack, Lyra responded, her smile bright. I've been thinking about our conversation last night. 
So have I, Jack admitted as they filled their plates and found a quiet table by a window overlooking the star-studded expanse of space. They ate in a comfortable silence for a few moments before Jack spoke up. Lyra, whatever challenges we might face, I believe what we have is worth exploring. Lyra nodded, her expression serious but warm. I agree. But we also have to consider the realities of our vastly different lives. How do you see this working? Jack considered her question, taking a thoughtful sip of his coffee. Well, we could start by working on a project together, like we discussed. Maybe something that involves both human and Thelosian technology. It could be a good way to integrate our worlds. So it sounds like a practical approach, Lyra agreed. We can advocate for a joint research initiative. It would give us a reason to stay in contact and work side by side. Encouraged by her enthusiasm, Jack added, And personally, I'm ready to visit Thalos, learn more about your culture firsthand. Maybe help set up an exchange program. Lyra's eyes lit up at the idea. I would like that and I would be honored to show you Talos. But you could meet my family, see where I come from. The conversation flowed naturally into plans for future visits and potential projects. They discussed technologies that could benefit from a hybrid approach, combining human ingenuity with Thelosian principles of harmony and flow. As they talked, their hands found each other across the table, fingers intertwining. It was a small gesture, but it spoke volumes about their growing connection. After breakfast, they joined a workshop focused on interplanetary relations. Throughout the session, they found themselves seamlessly partnering up, contributing ideas that were a blend of their respective cultural strengths. Later, while walking through one of the ship's many botanical gardens, Jack said, I think what makes this work, Lyra, is that we're not just drawn to each other as individuals, but also as representatives of our worlds. We both see the bigger picture. Lyra stopped, turning to face him among the lush greenery. Yes, it's rare to find someone who understands the importance of both. I feel like we've been brought together for a reason. Their walk turned into a longer discussion about potential futures, both personal and professional. They considered the obstacles they might face, from bureaucratic challenges to societal perceptions, and started brainstorming ways to address them. As the ship passed by a particularly beautiful star cluster, they paused to admire it. It's like the universe is putting on a show just for us, Jelta. Lyra laughed, her hand squeezing his. Maybe it is. They made their way back to the summit activities, their minds buzzing with plans and possibilities. It was clear that their relationship was about more than just personal feelings. It was about building bridges between two very different but equally fascinating worlds. As the day ended, they stood watching a distant sun set against the backdrop of space, its light fading into the cosmic horizon. We have a lot to look forward to, don't we? Jack asked, his tone hopeful. We do, Lyra replied, leaning her head against his shoulder. Together, I believe we can make a real difference. In that moment, under the vast, star-filled sky, Jack and Lyra felt a profound sense of purpose and possibility. Their journey together was just beginning, and the future seemed filled with endless opportunities. A few months after the summit, Jack was invited to Talos to speak at a conference on interstellar technologies an opportunity to further the collaborative initiatives he and Lyra had planned. Excited and a bit nervous about his first visit to Thalos, Jack prepared thoroughly, hoping to make a good impression not only on Lyra's colleagues but also on her family. Upon arrival, Lyra greeted him with a warmth that dissolved any lingering anxieties. Jack, welcome to Thalos. I'm so glad you could come. It's great to be here, Lyra, Jack responded, taking in the lush surroundings of Thalos's capital city a stark contrast to the metallic interiors of human spacecraft. During the first few days, Jack attended meetings and seminars discussing potential joint projects. Lyra was always by his side, providing insights and bridging any cultural gaps. The work was promising, but it was evident that something was weighing on Lyra. One evening, after a day filled with discussions and demonstrations, Lyra took Jack to one of her favorite spots on Thalus, a serene overlook with a view of the entire valley below. The sunset bathed the landscape in a golden light, creating a perfect backdrop for a serious conversation. Lyra, you've been quiet lately. Is everything okay? Jack asked, concern lining his voice. Lyra took a deep breath, her gaze fixed on the horizon. Jack, I have something important to tell you. It's about us, about me. Jack's heart raced, bracing for her words. What is it, Lyra? I'm pregnant, she said softly, turning to look at him directly. The news hit Jack like a wave. 
a mix of emotions washed over him surprise, fear, but also a profound sense of connection. Pregnant, but how? I mean, I know how, but we didn't think it was possible. Neither did I, Lyra replied. It appears our biologies are more compatible than we thought. I've consulted with the best medical experts here. They confirmed it and assured me that the baby is healthy. How do you feel about this? Jack asked gently, still processing the news. I'm overwhelmed, but also excited. This child, our child, could symbolize a new hope for interspecies relations. But Jack, I need to know how you feel about this, truly. Jack took her hands in his, his decision clear. Lyra, I love you. And if you're willing, I want to be here for you for our child. Whatever you need, whatever it takes. Lyra's eyes filled with tears, a mixture of relief and happiness. I was hoping you'd say that. I want us to raise our child together. As they stood there, the sun setting behind them, they discussed their next steps. They would need to prepare their families and their communities for the reality of a human Thalassian child. There would be challenges, but they were ready to face them together. Tomorrow I want to introduce you to my family, Lyra said. It's time they knew about us and about the baby. Jack nodded, ready for whatever lay ahead. I'm with you, every step of the way. The next day, Lyra took Jack to meet her family. The meeting was full of emotions, with initial shock giving way to cautious optimism. Her family, seeing Jack's genuine love and commitment, gradually opened up to the idea of their grandchild being a bridge between two worlds. As they left her family's home, Lyra leaned against Jack, grateful for his support. Thank you for being here, for being you. Jack smiled, squeezing her hand. There's no place I'd rather be. Together, they looked toward the future, uncertain but hopeful, ready to navigate the complexities of their shared life. The journey would be unlike any other. But they knew that together. They could forge a path of understanding and love, not just for themselves, but for their child and for the broader community of both humans and Thalosians. Several months had passed since Jack had moved to Thalos to be with Lyra, as they prepared for the arrival of their child. Together they had begun to lay the groundwork for a new initiative that combined human technology with the Thalosian principles, hoping to create a sustainable living environment that could serve as a model for human Thalosian collaboration. As they sat in their home office overlooking a tranquil Thalosian garden, Jack looked over the project blueprint spread out on the table. I think we've got a solid plan here, Lyra. The energy flow designs you suggested integrate perfectly with the human tech. Lyra, who was now visibly pregnant, smiled as she examined a holographic model of their project. It's a true blend of our worlds. Imagine if we could replicate this elsewhere. Their discussion was interrupted by the chime of the communication system. It was Dr. Mara, Lyra's sister, who was also her prenatal care specialist. Hello, Lyra, Jack. Dr. Mara greeted them warmly. I have some good news. The latest scans show that the baby is healthy and developing well. That's wonderful to hear, Mara, Lyra responded, her relief evident. Jack, ever curious about the medical integration of their species? Asked. Are there any new insights on how human and Thalosian biologies are integrating in the baby? It's unprecedented, Dr. Mara explained. The baby is a harmonious blend of both. It's truly remarkable and will provide valuable insights into the compatibility of our species on a biological level. Encouraged by the positive report, Jack and Lyra returned to their project discussion. Motivated by the personal stake they now had in proving that humans and Talosians could not only coexist but thrive together. Later that week, Jack and Lyra hosted a meeting with both human and Thalosian leaders to discuss the potential of their collaborative project. The leaders were intrigued but cautious, aware of the broader implications. As you can see, the project not only represents a new frontier in our technological collaboration, but also symbolizes a new era for human Thalosian relations. Jack explained passionately during the presentation. One of the Thalosian elders, a respected figure in the community, expressed his thoughts. This project and your child could pave the way for a deeper understanding between our people. It's a significant step, and while we must proceed with care, we are supportive. The meeting ended on a positive note, with agreements to proceed with initial phases of the project and continuous dialogue to ensure its success. Feeling hopeful, Jack and Lyra walked hand in hand back to their home. Do you think the community will really accept our child? Jack asked, the weight of their unique situation ever present in his mind. Lyra squeezed his hand, reassuring him. Our child will show them what's possible. 
We're not just bringing a new life into this world. We're bringing a new hope. So as the day of the birth approached, Jack and Lyra prepared themselves not just as future parents but also as pioneers of a new legacy. They organized community events to foster better human telushy and relations, inviting families from both species to share meals, stories, and hopes for the future. Finally, the day arrived. Surrounded by love and support from both communities, Lyra gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, a symbol of unity and the potential for a peaceful coexistence. They named her Solara, a name that embodied the light she brought into their worlds. As Jack held Solara in his arms, he whispered to her, You're going to show us all how to live together, how to love each other despite our differences. Lyra, watching them, felt a profound sense of accomplishment and optimism. Together, they had not only created a new life but had started to bridge two worlds. That night, as they watched Solara sleep, the stars above Talos seemed to shine a little brighter, reflecting the potential of what was to come. Jack and Lyra knew the road ahead would be filled with challenges, but they were ready to face them, together, as a family, and as ambassadors of a hopeful new era.